Hello, my name is Fahad al atiya I'm the Managing Director of Caravan Earth Foundation. Today we are presenting the program of the Majlis, a meeting place. Caravan Earth is a foundation with a mission to seed, practice and promote ethical entrepreneurship and well-being through art, craft, architecture, agriculture and education. We work to make a positive impact on social, cultural and ecological systems. The Majlis is our inaugural project and it gives us the chance to present the Foundation's research program at the Venice Architectural Biennale. The main purpose of the Majlis is to illustrate the importance of intercultural dialogue and mutual education to demonstrate the power of traditional knowledge and techniques in dealing with the majority of planetary issues of the present. The central architectural structure that we are currently building in Venice is the product of international collaboration between craftspeople from Colombia, Morocco and Italy. It is a study on natural materials, on preserving and reconstructing traditional knowledge in different localities around the world. The bamboo we are using for the core of the structure was harvested, measured, prepared for transportation by farmers and carpenters from Manizales, the central region of Colombia. The textiles for the medlis were made in Morocco from pure local wool and then woven together in different locations across the country. In Venice, these elements are being carefully assembled by local craftspeople through dialogue with the materials producers. The program is structured around these main elements, the architectural installation, an exhibition, a symposium and a garden. Today, you will meet some of the members of the team behind the Majlis. An important part of our story is that having traveled to Venice, Caravan's Majlis will continue its journey to Qatar in year 2022. In partnership with Qatar Museums, the Majlis will be installed in Doha during the World Cup tournament and will host a series of high profile events. The Caravan's Majlis is not just an exhibition. While it showcases great architectural expertise and symbolizes the values of craftsmanship, tradition and community, all close to Caravan's values, the Medlis will also provide a spectacular platform for reflecting on our collective future on planet Earth. International experts from many different fields will share this platform to discuss how we will live together in a world of rapid change. Please subscribe to our social media and newsletter so that you can receive updates about the journey. I will now give the floor to Terry Morel, the curator of the Medlis, speaking to us from Venice. So the Majlis is an ancient term in Arabic and Persian that meant a council. In pre-Islamic Arabia, the term was coined to define a council, a tribal council, in which uh, the members would take decisions for the best interest of the communities, the tribal communities. And then over the centuries, the role evolved and it became a place where guests would be received or entertained. So the, the Majlis was commissioned uh, from the architectural duo Simon Veles and Stefana Simic. Um, Simon was a pioneer in, of, of architecture in bamboo. And here you see sort of a, a wonderful juxtaposition of, of uh, crafts. Crafts from Colombia, because talking about the bamboo structure, which was designed and created there. And then the, um, the cover of the majlis, which is made of wool, and which was woven in Morocco and assembled here. The majlis needed to be placed in a, in a beautiful setting, and a garden preferably. So when I came here, I was absolutely seduced by um, the island of San Giorgio and the garden, the monastic garden of, of the Benedictine monks who have been here since the 11th century. And they had a wonderful little potager, uh, vegetable gardens, but the rest of it was rather sad and just grass. So I thought, well, we need someone who could really revive it and turn it into, into um, a powerful um, and beautiful setting for the Majlis. And I thought of Todd Longstaff Goen, who has worked on many fascinating projects and who also has a sense of history and uh, of building gardens within architectural and uh, historical settings. Although the Majlis is, is a reality for 
many, many uh, nomadic people across the world from uh, the Maghreb to Eastern Asia. The, the name and the, I suppose, the, the meaning of the Majlis is, is, is unfamiliar to many. So I felt it was very important to explain the role of the Majlis and what happens there um, through an exhibition, borrowing artifacts from many cultures um, and, uh, and of course many, uh, many museums. The San Rocco Mameluk carpet is one of the most precious rugs in the world and also one of the centerpieces um, of, of the exhibition. It has been in Venice for the past 500 years and was, com was bought from Cairo uh, to be placed in front of Tintoretto's crucifixion. So it's an extraordinary privilege to have this carpet here. Uh, and in a way, it symbolizes all the efforts that have been put together to bring this exhibition and the majlis and the garden together here and to create really a meeting place. This exhibition as a whole is a homage to craftsmanship uh, in all its form. It's the most, in the most uh, I would say, um, sim in the simplest form to the most refined forms. Um, but all come from the same uh, practices, from the same traditions. The exhibition will also include some uh, footage that we took uh, over the past two years in the places where the components of the Majlis were, um, were sourced. So that includes footage from Colombia, uh, where Simon Veles and Stefan Asimic live, and uh, Morocco, where all the covering and the, the, the woolen uh, textiles were uh, produced and um, sourced. So this will be uh, an important uh, feature in the, uh, in the exhibition, highlighting really the conjunction of talents and crafts that um, were uh, in operation uh, to create this magical structure. The COVID pandemic has made this uh, project very uh, challenging but it has also brought a lot of people together who initially were not going to uh, take part in this. So it's, it's, uh, it's been a source of blessings as well. And I really believe that the, the theme of the exhibition, how we will live together, has never been more poignant and more important uh, than in this particular year. And my wish is that uh, the uh, Abbasi de San Giorgio of this garden, the Majlis exhibition, and the Majlis itself will become uh, a source of uh, inspiration to the people who will gather and meet here. My name is Stefana Simic and I am an architect and working in partnership with Simon, Simon Veles. Uh, our formal business name is Gigagrass uh, and we're based in Bogota, Colombia. Bamboo has an obvious advantage in terms of sustainability, um, but I think, actually for me, the most motivational um, aspect of bamboo is um, the relation with the craftsman. There's no way to really, really standardize bamboo. I mean, you can reach a certain point, but you can't, you can't eliminate the craftsman from any process of the bamboo, um, kind of, from the bamboo architecture production. They are such skilled workers, they're such hard working workers. Um, it's not easy to, to cut bamboo from a forest, it's not easy to, to process it in a way that's viable for architecture, and people don't really think about that, including me. When I started um, dealing with bamboo, uh, I, I really didn't appreciate them. I mean, I loved the, the bamboo as a, as a concept in architecture, but only when you see them in a forest, you see how much power you need, how much skill you need to actually um, to, to work with such a, such a material. Caravan. Caravan, I really think the essence of it is about human relationships and um, community. I think it's addressing that above everything else um, because there is a real trouble now of connection between humans um, and I think I think that's the essence of it.
in any way, in, in every possible way, even from the architecture standpoint. Um, we're working on prefabricated buildings. Um, we're working in a different way with bamboo, which makes actually bamboo more accessible to the world as well. So, so I think it's all about sharing and communicating and, and that's it. Mm -hmm. My name is Simon Belles, I am an architect and I am not a bamboo architect. I also work with bamboo. That is a big difference because I love many other materials. I belong to the biodiversity of this country, so it means I have to work with many materials. My religion don't allow me to work with plastics, but concrete, steel, glass, it's okay for me. Well, what we are doing for caravan is very interesting because we are not building cathedrals or stadiums or airports. Those things that is a nomadic project, it really has Human, human scale, because it's humble. It's not huge buildings. Everything has a small scale, and it has to be thinking as an utilitarian building. But the beauty comes from the concept of textile architecture. The planet is a single one, and we, the planet is populated by very different people. And more and more, we are mixing constantly. It's okay that mixing is happening. And to be part of a multicultural project, I like it because that is nature. And especially in the tropics, it's a lot of biodiversity. Well, caravan means mobility. So what we are doing is not to be in a city. It's not part of any city. It's something that exists in one moment and then disappears and appears in a very different place. And mobility is the, is the concept behind the caravan world. And that is nomadism also. We are working in a nomadic project. I think the most important aspect of caravan is the cultural aspect. We are not making a village for tourism. We are not making a temporary structure for fun. What we are trying to make is a cultural Thing that is a place for learning. For many people from many places of the world, from many different ages, to have a learning experience. The idea is to work in a concept that is textile architecture. We have never worked at that before, but we realized that bamboo, which is a very strong natural material, once it is cut in one quarter or in half, it becomes a very flexible material much more than when he is round. So everything you see here is strapped of bamboo, laminated with bamboo. And we are inside a bamboo factory who, do, who produce the laminated material from bamboo. So our idea, because we are not archeologists, we are not historians, is to make a new approach from our point of view on how to do tensile, uh, textile architecture using basket weaving system very different from the tensor system, but it's also a tradition. And we are not inventing anything. That kind of thing has always been done when the humanity was nomadic, but we belong to that century, to that precise moment of the time. So this is our approach on how to do it in a modern way. We are using stainless steel because there's a high corrosion there. But it's also, we were thinking on brass, but brass is never as strong as stainless steel. And the welding that we have to do welding, the welding in brass is much more difficult than the welding in stainless steel. And since 3000 years or more, we belong to the, to, to, not to the stone age, to the iron age. And today we are still using, we are still in the, in the iron age. And the idea is not to use anything coming from, from the oil industry. So that will be covered with textiles, with fabrics coming from the animal uh, hair. And also from cotton and from silk, but always using only natural materials.
نشوف دوك العيالات تا هما وعاو بان راه نشوف الحاله ديال هذوك الناس اللي خدموا معنا تحسنت شويه تا المراه اللي جات ما تتعرفش و تتقول بغات نخدم راه كنعلموها دابا هاد العيالات اللي تينجيو معايا راني علمت فيهم شحال من وحده كانت لي ما كانتش تنجي تقول لك هو بغيت ولكن راه انا ما عرفتش شكون اللي غيسدي ليا وشكون اللي غادي يكبد ليا وشكون اللي غادي يبدا ليا المنشج تنسدي ليها ونبدا ليها ونمشي معاها لدارها ونهز معاها المنشج وعاد تنجي راه من الاسره ديال الرمان وديال الكروش وهذيك الصباعه الطابيعيه والحنه وهذا الشيء باش كان طيب تسبق الوالده ديالنا ودوزتي وصافي بلاص نديروا خاص يجونا فلوس بزاف <تصفيق> لا دابا تقريبا كاين كاين الكيميه اكثر من ديك الساعه لان دابا الرؤوس ديال الماشيه بصفه عامه راه كثيره بكري في هذاك الوقت اللي عقلنا حنايا ما عندكش الجهد باش تمشي تشري جلابه من السوق تنديروا فوق الخيمه تنثبتوها على البرد وعلى العجاج تنديروا حبل هنا تنشدوه في الارض ونشدوه من هنا في الارض وتيولي شاد الخيمه كنديروهم هادو جوج بحال هكا كاين اللي تيدير جوج كاين اللي تيدير مثلا ربعه يدير هادو هنا وتنخرج ولكن حنا عندنا عاده تنديرو هادو تنجيو تنبعدو شويه على الوسط وتنديرهم بحال هكا هذا تيتسمى الحبل هما كلهم يعني بالنسبه ليا انا تنشوفهم هذا داخل علينا هذا داخل على الصناعه التقليديه برودوي والصباغة ولكن تتبقى في الشغل تتبقى في الخدمة العيالات بكري تيشدوا الصوف وتي وتيديروها في واحد ال... واحد الربيعة تنقولوا لها احنا تيغشت وتيرطبوها ويغسلوها مزيان وينشفوها تيفكوها بشوية ويديروا لها القرشال ويلا فيها شي ربيعة ولا شي شي حاجة تيحيدوها دابا راه الماكن دابا ما بقاش داك الشيء فيه خدمة راه حب لا ما كنتيش تبغي الحاجه ما غاديش تخدمي العمل اللي كنتي تتحبيه راه غادي تكوني مخلصه فيه اي حاجه راك عارف اي حاجه كنتي تبغيها هو الا وقت تكوني مخلص فيها كيف ما كانت نجيج ولا اي حاجه تنموت في الخدمه ديالي الى قسم الله الى قسم الله باش نمشي راه غادي غادي نمشي والا مشيت مزيانه ليا بعدا غادي نعرف حنا عندنا واحد الثقافة تنقولوا اللي شاف بزاف حسن من اللي عايش بزاف هذه مزيانة لي أنا ما كرهتش نشوف وثانيا أنا بالنسبة لي غادي يكون عندي واحد الشحنة ديال الفرح غنكون فرحان وخا تكون هذه الخدمة صعيبة غنكون فرحان ليها حيت كان غنمشي نشوف ونشوف وجوه ويشوفوني وجوه وغادي يشوفوا الصناعة التقليدية ديال المغاربة Hello, I'm Todd Longstaff Gowan, landscape architect and landscape historian, based in London, but speaking to you from Venice. I'm standing at the foot of the Tower of San Giorgio Maggiore on the island of San Giorgio, opposite the Doge's Palace at the centre of Venice. The tower itself behind me is one of the most conspicuous landmarks in the city, and I'm standing within the garden. Uh, this is the old monastic garden. The monastery has been here for just over 1,200 years. This garden until recently was very neglected and it's been a pleasure to create the Magellus garden and project within this site because it was so awfully um, neglected. It was almost a car park. So we've lifted all this up and created a, a garden and it's not a temporary one as you might expect for most exhibitions but a lasting sustainable garden that will be a productive base for the monastery itself. The monastery is a living organism filled with monks that have been here for a very long time. They um, will come and take their fruit and veg from the garden itself. But it forms a fantastic setting for the Magellist because we're trying to create this idea of a wonderful place to live and to work and to meet. And the garden forms a fantastically beautiful and relaxing setting in which to do that. It furthermore promotes this idea of Venice as being the center, the epicenter for many centuries in Middle Ages as well as the Renaissance for the exchange of plants from the Orient and from all over the world indeed, they first came to Venice before they were redistributed and this made Venice quite a lot of money. But gardens now don't abound as they used to, so the opportunity to create a garden that commemorates this great idea is rather wonderful. 
And here we've decided to use aromatics and herbs and medicinal culinary things that would have been popular at the same time throughout that long period that were introduced here and still have some commercial value uh, within the goon itself. Well, we've made a garden here which is a productive garden, so most of the things in here can be either eaten or they're slightly ornamental, but the idea is to try and show a garden as it might have looked in the Middle Ages. It's a playful evocation. We don't have sufficient documentary evidence to tell us precisely what they look like. But I think everyone will know from looking at engravings that there is something that sort of reminds them of what they look like, such as we have these very deep furrows we plant on top of these troughs. And um, they, just so you see these wonderful lines of, of uh, fruit and vegetables. And it just conjures this notion of a great um, productive garden. And we have also chickens. We have, um, they, they were here before we got here. When we kept them, we made a rather nicer pen for them and sort of a medieval style hen house, all that bamboo. And they form a very lively um, accompaniment to our um, garden experience here in Venice. But some of the trees we planted here are very interesting. The most, I think for me, the most astonishing is the, the jujube tree, which I was really unfamiliar with until I came to this part of the world because we can't grow them at home. But it is a tree that was introduced from the Orient in the 14th century, the latest, and it became incredibly popular for its many qualities, medicinal, apothecary, culinary, and other. And it's uh, cultivated in hedges and, and uh, trees. And we have a few specimens here that are probably about 40 years old. We moved them into the garden themselves. But they were um, an extraordinary, um, commercially important plant introduced into Veneto because in the Middle Ages and the, and the early Renaissance, Venice was the epicenter of the plant exchange trade in Europe. So almost all these plants came through Venice and were redistributed and sold across Europe. Not only the plants themselves, but the fruits and things that came from them. But the jujube tree um, is a rather extraordinary example of this. And still to this day, it holds a special place in the Venetian calendar because on the 8th of October, they celebrate in some parts of, of the Veneto, the jujube feast day, um, which is when the fruit comes into, uh, when it's ripened in October. And uh, this commemorates, as it were, this great commercial, important plant that was, was um, part of the economic powerhouse that was part of the myth of Venice that made Venice so magnificent, so rich and so powerful throughout the whole of the uh, Middle Ages and Renaissance right up to the end of the 18th century. Hello, I'm Johnny Cornwell and I'm running the Majlis programme of events at San Giorgio Maggiore throughout the Biennale. As you've heard from my colleagues previously, a Majlis is a meeting place and we intend to put our new building to good use, welcoming visitors from far and wide to address the Biennale theme for 2021, How Will We Live Together? We intend to address this question from the perspective of the mission of Caravan Earth, namely the promotion and preservation of traditional craftsmanship and vernacular architecture, the careful sourcing of materials, ethical production, the livelihoods and community of craftsmen and craftswomen, and holistic methods in agriculture. Our Majlis programme includes standalone talks, roundtable discussions, films, and symposia which will convene larger groups of experts. Our programme will unfold both offline and online between now and November, when we hope more people will be able to travel to Venice. For the opening of the exhibition, we're very fortunate to be joined by the Majlis architects, Simon Velez and Stefana Simic, who are traveling from Colombia to be with us. We're also joined by the landscape architect of the garden, Todd Longstaff Gammon. We're also delighted to announce the participation of Professor Abdel Wahed El Wakil, the foremost expert on Islamic architecture, and to be able to screen the premiere of an interview with Professor El Wakil, which serves as a very interesting response to the Biennale theme. An event in October will see the culmination of an important collaboration between Caravan Earth and the Smithsonian Institution and INTBAU, the International Network of Traditional Building, Architecture and Urbanism, which is part of the Prince's Foundation. This event gives us a great opportunity to explore in more depth some of the key areas of interest for Caravan Earth. How to preserve traditional crafts and ways of life, how to live in a changing climate, and how to live in cities of the future. In addition to talks and round tables, the event 
will include film screenings, story circles and demonstrations of craftsmanship and construction skills. Confirmed speakers include Yasmin Lari, founder of the Heritage Foundation of Pakistan, best known for her work at the intersection of social justice and architecture. Jeremy Cross of the Prince's Foundation and Dr. Marjorie Hunt of the Smithsonian Institution. Other confirmed speakers at our events include Marwa Al Sabuni, the Syrian architect and author of The Battle for Home and Building for Hope. Dr. Michael Ramage, director of Cambridge University's Centre for Natural Material Innovation. From Lebanon, representatives of Restart Beirut to talk about their work on the urgent restoration of buildings damaged by last year's catastrophic explosion. And to talk about the role of culture and museums in living together, we welcome museum directors Mikhail Piotrovsky of the Russian State Hermitage Museum, Claudio Cravero, director of the Sheikh Faisal bin Qasim Altani Museum, and Professor Wayne Modest of the Dutch National Museum of World Cultures. We also look forward to welcoming curators from the National Museum of Qatar, with whom we're collaborating next year as the Majlis travels from Venice to Doha. We'll also be joined by our colleagues from Hinat Salma Farm, a caravan earth initiative dedicated to holistic methods in agriculture, architecture and community development. In collaboration with our honorary committee member Moulay Saeed, we will hold a Moroccan-themed event to celebrate the work and contribution of Moroccan craftsmen and craftswomen to our exhibition. All our talks and discussions will be published on this YouTube channel, so please subscribe and we look forward to seeing you either offline or online here in Venice.